Hi, my name is Juan and I work at the Universidad Nacional del Sur in Argentina. I'm going to present to you the contribution of our work titled Realistic Buoyancy Model for Real-Time Application, presented with my colleague Gustavo Pato and Claudio de Reos. The problem of the interaction between submerged solids and liquids is today an open problem. Most of the current solutions are not for real-time scenarios or use proxy geometries defined manually. In this example of the Assassin's Creed game from 2012, we can see a proxy geometry based solution using invisible sphere to compute the submerged volume and then the buoyancy force. Another example of a real-time solution is this one from the Uncharted 3 game, which uses sample points along the sur model surface and a spring to simulate a typical oscillation movement of a buoyant object. The reason why this is a difficult problem to solve is that the computation of the movement variables has to be made quickly and accurately. Our fundamental idea behind the proposed solution is to use texture to store pre-computed data, which allows us to perform the computation fast enough. This makes the method compatible with a GPU-based implementation. This is the processing pipeline of our solution. First, we pre-compute two textures called the position and area vector textures. Then, in the simulation loop, using these two textures and the liquid present in the scene, we compute the object submerged volume and the buoyancy center. This allows us to update the physical state of the object. In the cases where the object is permeable, we compute the amount of liquid that enters and update the physics using a graph as a data structure. The physical magnitude we need to compute are total mass, center of mass, and inertia tensor, which is specified by a 3 by 3 matrix for 3D objects. For example, the mass can be computed as an integral over the object volume of the mass density function. Using the diversion theorem, we can express the volume integral as a surface integral by identifying an arbitrary field with specific characteristics. If the surface parameterization is reasonable, we can approximate the surface integral as the sum over texels of a special texture. Here we can see how to express the center of mass as a surface integral. Following the reasoning, we can also express the inertia tensor as a surface integral. We recommend you to read the cycle bibliography to know all the details. To compute these integrals, we need the surface normal vector and integration segment areas. This data is stored in one of the two pre-computed texture, called area vector texture. Also, we need the position of the integration segment, which are stored in the second pre-computed texture, called position texture. These textures are generated by baking the corresponding attributes present on the original mesh in texture space. For example, for the position texture, we rasterize each mesh triangle in a given texture. The inner texels are interpolated using bicentric coordinate of the position of the three vertices in object space. In the case of area vector texture, we interpolate the vertex normal attribute in the same way. The area occupied by each texel is computed by the division of the surface area occupied by the triangle and the total number of texels corresponding to the area vector texture. Using the previously presented textures, we can compute the submerged volume for any model object, given the depth of each texel, which in turn can be computed for them from the position the texel and the liquid height at that position. 
to compute the submerged volume, we calculate this integral with the precaution of integrate only the submerged textiles, which is the submerged surface portion of the object. The integral can be numerically computed using this expression. F sub i means the liquid level in war space at textile position. That information depends on the liquid description in the scene, which can be particle based or a simple grid. Once the submerged volume is computed, then the upward void force can be computed easily using the liquid density. This force is applied at the center of buoyancy, which is the center of mass of the displaced, displaced liquid. The relative position between the center of buoyancy and the center of mass determines if the movement is stable or not. If the center of buoyancy is located above the center of mass, the movement is stable. This means that the objects tend to recover its original position. In the other case, the object will not tend to recover its initial position. Once the physics variables are computed, we perform an integration to compute the new physics state of the object. Any numerical integration method can be used. In our implementation and demos, we use the simple Euler integration technique. Here we can see an animation of a boy simulation. Now we can see the two forces that define the movement. The green line shows the buoyancy force and the red line shows the weight force. Each one applied at different positions. In the case of permeable objects, the physical magnitude changes over time because of the liquid inside the object. For these cases, we propose to incorporate a new data structure called liquid graph. This data structure stores the liquid amount and the distribution inside the model. The liquid graph is defined as a set of edges and nodes. Each node stores its position, capacity, and amount of liquid inside. On the other hand, each edge stores the two nodes which are connected to and a permeability constant. This graph can be created manually by the artist or automatically. For the second case, we propose the following algorithm. First, the serial mesh segmentation is used to extract different submeshes. This method first computes the shape diameter function descriptor, or SDF, for each mesh vertex. Then, applies a clustering algorithm to identify regions with similar SDF values. Finally, it performs a graph cut based algorithm to separate the independence of meshes. After the segmentation, our method computed from each submesh the sphere centered at the submesh center that minimizes the quadratic error between the sphere surface and the submesh vertices. Finally, we connect two nodes with an edge if the respective submeshes are adjacent in the original model. Here we can see several automatically generated graphs using different number of clusters in the segmentation phase. After the creation, the internal state of the graph must be updated in the simulation loop. This involves two phases. First, we need to compute the amount of liquid that enters the object. Then, we need to model the internal liquid distribution according to model position and rotation. In order to compute the amount of liquid that enters the model, we use Darcy's law. This law models the liquid flux 
given the medium permeability, the contact area, liquid viscosity, and pressure difference in the contact area along a section of length L. If the permeability of the model is variable along its surface, then we can use a permeability texture to define a, the permeability on a per texel basis. Then we need to compute the liquid movement inside the model. In these three cases, it's easy to note that in the first two graphs, liquid from node A would move to node C. This would not happen in the third case because of energy barrier. The algorithm should take into account these particular cases. This is the algorithm that updates the internal distribution. In a few words, the algorithm searches for each node a particular one, called discharge node, which is a node capable of receiving liquid from the first one. Then the algorithm computes the volume of liquid that would travel between these two nodes. This operation takes into account the difference of potential energy and the permeability of the interconnecting edges. Similar to the case of the dry objects, we need to compute the graph's physical magnitude in order to perform the position update. Given the discrete nature of the graph, the physical magnitude can be computed as a discrete variance of the equation previously presented. Then we must combine the magnitude of the dry objects and the graph to obtain the magnitude of the complete liquid solid system. Here we can see an animation of a sinking boat simulation. This image shows the permeability texture representing a damaged area in the boat hull. The damaged zone is at the front of the boat, as we will see in the simulation frames. Here we see the same animation with the corresponding liquid graph. This example is the same simulation with a different permeability texture, producing different results. Now we can see an absorbent flash pipe. Here, 
Here we can see an example of an unstable buoyancy movement. In this example, we can see the result of an object with variable mass density changing over time. The red zones show higher mass density than the green zone. In this demo, all the physics variables must be computed in real time. The computed time of this frame is 3.2 milliseconds. This animation shows a hot air balloon being inflated. As the volume increases, the more air fluid is displaced, producing a greater upward force, which in turn exceeds the weight force and the balloon eventually takes off. To conclude, in this presentation we propose a new method to model the buoyancy movement for both permeable and impermeable objects. The method can be computed in real time, so it can be used for interactive applications as video game simulators, virtual reality applications, etc. It is interesting that from this method we can obtain a level of detail technique controlling the sizes of the generative textures. This is left at future work. Thank you for listening to me.